Dear allies, on behalf of marginalized minorities and people of color everywhere, thank you so much for standing with us in our time of need. Also, please stop expecting us to thank you anytime you do anything. We need to come together to fight oppression in all forms, but before we do that, let's get some things straight. Here's the thing, after a crazy election cycle and an even crazier post-election, people started to learn some of the truths about the difficulties of being a marginalized person in America. And that's awesome. But I hope we realize that these minority groups have had to deal with Islamophobia, racism, and sexism their entire lives. People have come wild at me like, why aren't you more upset? I'm 25 years old. I've been mad for 400 years. Check your privilege. Basically, you don't arrive centuries late to a party that you were repeatedly invited to and then walk up to the DJ like, Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. No, the DJ's not going to play We Shall Overcome because you decided it's time to come in and turn up. Phrases like what's in it for me and this has nothing to do with us have traveled down through time because while humans are tribal creatures, we also are creatures of self-preservation with a dash of narcissism and a pinch of ego. I'm a strong believer in united we stand, divided we fall, which seems simplistic and naive, but there's truth in it. Here are my three things that allies, including myself, need to do so we can unite against the evil empire. Number one, remember that everyone's individual experience is going to be different. From the day we are born, we are building our reality like a house. Some of our houses will be further along than others, and some houses will be different based on the materials we use to build it. When someone with a new idea comes along and asks you to take bricks away from the foundation of your house, you're going to be hesitant because those are some of your first bricks. Those are the ideas that your parents, your friends, and families have taught you. The older you get, the more unwilling you'll be to make a major change to your house. That's okay, but, you're not just a house. You're a house in a neighborhood, in a city, in a country, in the world. Before you clap back because someone has a different opinion than you, remember, you can't just walk into their house and start renovations. That's not your crib. Try and understand their experiences and work on renovations together. Number two, diversify your information intake. Doesn't it feel like we've read three million articles in the last 10 months? People will read what affects them and interests them personally, and that's okay. But there are people outside of you and people who look like you who have stories that also deserve to be read. I'll be honest, there are plenty of stories about communities that I don't belong to that I haven't read, but I'm working on it. And I'm not trying to stun on anyone, I'm just trying to read as much as possible before Betsy DeVos takes away our books, classrooms, schools. Imaginations, dreams. Number three, remember what privileges we have. I am a black Muslim male in this country. And yes, we come in this shade. <laughs> yes, those two things have their setbacks, but I'm not a woman, I'm not LGBTQ, and those two groups have setbacks I'll never experience. On top of that, I'm able-bodied, college educated, and male which have their own set of privileges that come with them. Your experience will never outweigh the experience of somebody living in a community that you don't belong to. Dr. King says in his letters from Birmingham jail, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. If you're only helping people who look like you or belong in your community, you're not helping everybody, you're just helping yourself. If you really believe all lives matter and you see some lives being devalued, then it is your responsibility to go and rectify that. Advocating for social justice is no easy feat. It's not a one day thing. Once you start, you're doing it for the rest of your life. We need to stop the infighting, quit trying to figure out who's struggling more and unite to fight for justice for all. United we stand, divided we don't stand. Wait. <laughs>